Hey everyone, it's Sarah from the Art Studio. Welcome back. Uh, today we're going to be making a clay pinch pot. I know most of you have probably used this clay before, but if you haven't, it's an air dry water based clay, which means that when we're done molding it and uh, making whatever we're making, instead of baking in the oven or firing in a kiln, we're going to set it in a warm, dry place for up to five days, maybe a week. At that point, it'll turn a nice light gray color and we'll know it's ready to paint. So we'll need our clay, we'll need a cup of water, and we'll need a paper towel. For everyone's clay, for this project, you should have in a bag two long skinnier pieces and you might have two extra um, smaller pieces like this in case your, uh, your slabs were skinnier like mine. Um, some of you probably don't have these extra pieces because your slabs were thicker. So we're only gonna be using these two pieces. So the extra pieces of clay you have, you're gonna put back in your plastic bag with a damp paper towel. I already dampened mine, um, but it kind of dried out already. So I'm gonna put it back in my water, wring it out, and I'm gonna put that back in my bag with all my clay and then I'm gonna seal it tight so uh, nothing dries because this clay does dry very fast. And the same thing with this clay, uh, you'll grab an extra paper towel, wring it out again. And you also probably wanna uh, take a trash bag and cut it in half and you can tape it down on your table so that, the th so that there's no mess because I'm already making a mess and I know you probably don't wanna do this at home. You know, mom and dad probably would get mad. So you take your paper towel and lay it on top of your clay whenever you're not using it so it doesn't dry out. So one of the first things we're gonna be doing with our clay is ripping it apart. I'm gonna take a few pieces and I'm gonna start pushing it together in between my palms of my hands. I'm trying to make it into a small ball. You might want to take it and put it down on the table, roll it around a little bit. And you don't want it too big. It should fit in the inside of your hands. So, not too big. Now when you're also using this clay, you don't want to use too much water. The water is there to help smooth out cracks. If there's any cracks, you can take a tiny bit on your finger. I really have the tiniest amount on my finger. Roll it on there because when you end up putting too much water on your clay, it ends up becoming slick and you can't get a good grip on it. So we don't want to put too much water. That's only for details and smoothing things out or if it gets too dry. So we don't want to cover our whole piece in water. So when we get to a nice rounded shape that you're happy with, we can move on to the next step. And I think this looks pretty good. So once we have our ball, the next step is we're gonna take our thumb and we're gonna place it right in the center of the ball and we are gonna push down really far. Not too far, but maybe about halfway. And I know mine's not perfectly centered either, that's okay if yours isn't. Um, we'll fix it as we go. So, uh, now that we uh, made our little hole, the next step is to take our sphere, we're gonna tap it on our table a little bit, just so that we get a nice flat bottom. Not too hard though. Um, and then once we've done that, we're gonna take our hand, um, and kind of, you're gonna start going like this. Um, my teacher used to call it the quacker, kind of like a duck, so you'd never forget uh, this step in the process. So you're gonna take uh, your sphere, you're gonna place your thumb inside, and this hand out here, you're gonna kind of quack the whole way around. While holding it in your other hand, just go around your whole piece. Adding some decent pressure while you're doing this. And you see, I already got um, some decent uh, space inside my uh, little bowl here. So I'm gonna keep going a little bit longer. So at the same time I'm doing this, I'm also moving my thumb. 
So both of them are moving. And when you get to these parts that maybe might be thicker, you want to add more pressure. A little less pressure on the parts that are thinner. Then you can tap it a little bit. The edge is a little bit rounder. But just keep going until you're happy with the size of your bowl. And really be mindful of the walls of your bowl. I'm trying really hard to make sure all of my walls are even. So maybe over here it looks a little bit thicker um, than over here and over here. So over here I'm gonna add more pressure to make it the walls thinner so it's not too heavy on those sides. And same with the bottom, you don't want it too heavy on the bottom. Add some pressure on the bottom if you think it's too heavy down there as well. What I'm gonna show you guys today is an animal or two that I'll make out of these um, and then maybe I'll do like a change dish or you can keep jewelry like a jewelry dish um, and maybe we can do a handle or something I don't know we'll see but definitely a lot of stuff you guys can do and you guys don't have to follow with what I'm doing you guys can take um, what I'm doing and what you're learning from it and then make something else. Let's say you don't like the animal I'm making, you can do whatever animal you want. Because I think I'm gonna probably do a shark, and I might do like a frog, or, hmm, I don't know, maybe a dog. So I think this looks pretty good. All the sides look even. Now, I'm gonna very gently tap it again on the table. Here, I'll do it over so you, can, so you guys can see. Tap it on the table a little bit more. I'm being gentle, I'm not slamming it. Being really gentle with it and just tapping it. And see, I already got a flat bottom again back on my pot. Now, I'm just putting my thumbs inside and just pressing around again with both of them and also adding pressure on the outside with my other hand. So I guess I'm doing a double quacker, I guess you could say. And just going around and really making sure everything is even and smooth. So if you have any lumps or any bumps in the bottom of your pot, the next step you can do to smooth those out is you'll put your pinky inside again, put your top fingers up top, and we're gonna go around, adding pressure again. Trying to make sure everything is even down there. And also defining the shape of your bowl. This is a good uh, step to do if you want a really clean shape. And my walls are starting to get a little flimsy. See, they move easy. So I think I'm gonna stop uh, making them thin because I don't want them too thin, especially when uh, we're using this air dry clay. Um, you need to be able to pick it up from wherever it is and it needs to hold its shape in order to know that it will dry and hold its shape and not crack or fall apart. So I think that looks pretty good. Another way to know if your uh, pinch pot is the right uh, width is to take your pinky and to place it on the rim. If it's the width of your pinky or about, that should be thick enough. Um, so when we're at this point and everything is nice and smooth um, and done, we're gonna start uh, by finishing tapping it again because my bottom already rounded a little bit. So I want it nice and smooth on the bottom. So I'm gonna cup it between my hands and tap it down. Maybe turn it a little bit while I do it. Now I'm gonna take it, and now that it's got nice and flat in my hand, nice and tight, and I'm gonna tap it gently. Oop, it's okay. You'll do it with both hands. Tap it gently on the table so you get a nice flat rim. 
I'm gonna tie them for a pinch, uh, pinch five. Let's see. Yep. And now do the cracker again, gently, and smooth it out while I turn it in my other hand. Now uh, we can move on to the next step, which is smoothing. So now that we can move on to smoothing, um, this is when if you have any, uh, let's say, I'll make a crack. Um, let's say you have a big crack in it when you were molding it. We can pinch that together. And just fill in and smooth over those spots with our finger fix any mistakes at this point. Maybe I'll tap it again, just to make sure it's nice and smooth. I'm gonna smooth out any of these little bumps or cracks with my finger. I'm still not using water at this point. Um, I'm not using water to smooth yet. I haven't really used water in this project at all so far, except to dampen the towels um, I was using. And also, I'm gonna remind you guys again, um, if you guys have any clay on the table, make sure your damp paper towel is on top of them so your clay doesn't dry out. But yeah, you're just gonna keep going around your whole clay pot and using your finger and smoothing any little bumps you see. And once it's all smooth, then we can go on to using a little bit of water to make it extremely smooth. So I'm just gonna keep going until I'm happy and satisfied with the way my pinch pot looks. Okay, now that I've uh, really smoothed out uh, my pinch pot with my fingers, I'm gonna take my water and I'm gonna take my finger, dip it in the water, not too much water, and I'm gonna start smoothing out all the lumps in my clay pinch pot. Sometimes I like going in circles. Sometimes I'll go and do nice long uh, sweeps with my finger inside to get really smooth and rounded. Um, when you're on the rim of your pot, you might want to take your thumb and your uh, pointer finger. You can go around like that and really get it smooth. And you see how it's still not really wet? There's only like the tiniest bit of water on there. I'm not drowning my pot in water because if you do that, um, it'll be too wet and you risk um, it falling apart and cracking very easily. Um, and you also risk the fact that it might take a really long time to dry. Uh, I know my pot with the amount I'm using, my pot will probably be done in four days, maybe five days with drying, also depending on whatever I decide to put on it um, and how thick those pieces are as well. So I'm just gonna keep going around, either going in circles or long uh, brush strokes, finger strokes with my fingers on the pot, just trying to smooth out any inconsistencies and just making it as smooth as possible. And that looks pretty good. Might tap it again one more time, just so it's nice and flat up top. And then our pinch pot is done. So at this point um, is when we'll decide what we wanna make out of it. Or you can leave it the way it is. The only tools you really need for this project are your own hands. But um, for doing designs, or let's say you wanna sign your name in it, I'm gonna use a paper clip. So I'm gonna unfold the paper clip a little bit. Use the pointy end, flip my pot over, and I'm gonna sign my name. Another thing you can do is also, you could use a fork if you want to. It might be a little bit harder, but also it could be easier. Because you have more control with the whole thing in your hand. Put my name in, and I also 
also think I'm gonna put the date because we're in quarantine and um, this is going down in history, so why not put the date in there too? So you always have something to remember. Before I move on to uh, making something out of my pinch pots, I'm gonna show you some other things you can do if you just wanna leave it like this. So um, you can use a paper clip or you can use a fork or anything else you see that has a pointy edge on it. Um, not too pointy though because we don't want it to pierce through the clay, we just want to have like an indent. So a rounded, something with a rounded edge like a fork is great. Um, you can make designs in your pinch pot. So maybe with our fork, we can go up and make stripes throughout the whole thing, which I like, it's really classic and it will look really good when you paint it. You can do that. And then you can also, you know, go cross ways and make uh, diamonds. If you don't like that, you can always smooth it out. There's no mistakes. Um, you can also do like, a wiggly line with your fork I'm just going in like a wave shape back and forth so that's something else you can do if you don't want um, you know to make it into something else or you just want designs on there you can carve designs in or with the paper clip, you can actually draw onto your uh, clay pieces. So we can make drawings on the surface of it too. Um, I'm not actually gonna do it upside down. Um, let's say we wanted to draw a heart. you can have like your own drawings or your own art um, on your clay and then when you paint them in you can paint your drawings in on the surface of your clay as well but you see like I drew a little flower a little heart and then um, you can take your damp paper towel or your finger and try and smooth out those little um, bumps the clay that came out um, so yeah so that's one option you can do for your clay pinch pot so I just smoothed the designs out um, of my pinch pot from before. So another step you can do for your clay pinch pot is make some little legs on it so you can stand up on something. So you'll take the clay that you had um, underneath your paper towel. And we're gonna tear this clay up a little bit. Move it around our hands. to her to lay on top of. So take a little piece, roll it in the palm of my hand. It's a little bit too big, so I'm going to take a little bit off. Roll it again. Let's see what size I get. I think that's good, so we can do maybe two more of those. all look about the same size so now at this point um, if you carved your name or something in it you got to be careful where you place them so you don't cover your name uh, so I'm gonna place my pinch pot down on the table and I'm gonna take one of the little balls I made and a fork I'm gonna make some uh, scratch marks on the bottom of it on one side just like that and you can do the same thing 
um, with a paper clip if you have it, you can make the same scratch marks. So then you'll take it, take a little bit of water in your finger, and wet it down, just like that. Um, and then you're gonna do it in the same spot where you're doing that, where you're placing it on your pinch pot. So I'm gonna score a little bit, these little scratch marks. Right there. Take my finger with a little water, put a little water on there. I'm gonna take my ball, I'm gonna place it down. So both sides that are, have the scratch marks and are wet are touching and they meet together. The scratch marks with the water make them stick and combine. So and then I'm gonna do that two more times so then I get three of them on the bottom of my pinch pot. So I'm just finishing up with doing my last little ball. Scorching it, scratching it on both sides with a tiny bit of water and placing it down just like that. And I'm going to smooth them out a little bit. And then with the back of your fork, you see how there's still some play that I can see between? We're going to try and smooth down those edges so that you can't see it completely and it um, will make it stronger so they stick together and combine easier. And you're going to do that and go all the way around and do that to all three of them. See, one of mine already came off. That's okay if that happens. Just stick it back down on there. That's why you should be doing this with um, the pinch pot on the table. I'm going to put one finger on top and gently do that again. And this is if you want to do this step. You don't have to do this. This is if you want to add these onto yours. like that with all those little sides smushed down so then we're gonna take our finger I have the tiniest amount of water on it if you can tell and I'm gonna smooth it out and really get in between I'm being really gentle I'm not trying to push this off I'm just trying to smooth down any little lumps and bumps Once you finish smoothing all the little bumps and little cracks, it should look something like this. You can tell I really smoothed those down the best I could uh, to get in between all those. Um, so at this point, you can flip it over, place it down, look, and now it stands up by itself. I fix mine up a little bit more. But it makes it look a little bit fancier. So now it's just not a little pinch pot sitting on its own, sitting upright. And I think I'm gonna leave these on to show you guys all the other steps. So um, another thing we can do um, on our pinch pot is maybe you wanna make like a little figurine sitting on the edge of your bowl. I still have the little legs on mine. Um, but I think I'm gonna make a little bird to sit on mine. You can make a little frog, you can make um, a little puppy dog, you can make anything sitting on the little edge of your bowl, but I think I'm gonna make a bird. So, to make a bird, I'm gonna take a little tiny bit of clay and roll it into a ball. That looks good. So I did about this size, maybe about a little bit bigger than my thumb. 
place that there just for now. Take that much clay into another bowl. Yes, that looks good. So at that point, I'm gonna do the same technique as before. I'm gonna use my fork and I'm gonna make some score marks, some little scratches on the bigger one. I'm gonna do the same thing on the smaller one. This is gonna be the body and the head, so I'm connecting the two. Take a tiny bit of water on both sides and place them together, just like that. And while that sits for a second, right here so you guys can see. But while that sits, I'm gonna start making um, his little wings. Taking another little piece of clay and put that there. So I'm gonna take this, it can be any shape, um, whatever you're starting off with, but you kind of want to make it into a teardrop. Also, it's very thick, so I'm gonna use my two fingers and pat it uh, down to make it thinner. And at the same time, using my other two fingers, continue making uh, this teardrop shape which is going to end up being our wing flip it around on both sides so you can see how it looks I think that looks pretty good um, I'm going to make another one and now you can use uh, this one kind of like for reference and how big it should be. So I'm gonna do the same thing. Just took a piece of clay and I'm gonna try and mold it into the shape that I want using my hands. Two fingers are using it to flatten out and the other two fingers are just uh, getting the shape of it. This one looks a little bit more pointed, so I'm going to try and point this one out a little bit more. Let's see again. Put them up together, back to back. They look pretty good. And now they look about just the same size together. So, now I got my little birdie. I'm gonna do the same thing I did before with the um, little feet that we added onto our clay pinch rod. I'm gonna combine um, these two. Just trying to smooth these two together and combine them enough so that they will uh, stick. Just like that. I'll take my finger dip it in a tiny bit of water and smooth so it look, should look something like that and then um, on either side of it I'm going to make some score marks little scratches with my fork sides so one on this side one on this side I'm gonna do the same thing so one of the sides of the wings a little bit of water a little bit of water on both of these and then I'm gonna take these 
both sides I have the scratches touching each other. And do that to the seam uh, on the other side. Now you have, should have something that looks a little bit like this. Now you can take the time to smooth out a little bit and really press those wings in. And now I'm gonna make a tiny little beak, tiny bit of clay. I'm just gonna mold it. Um, it looks kind of like a ball right now. I'm gonna take my other two fingers. I'm gonna press down going around, trying to make it into a pointed shape. it has to be smoothed down. pick a spot um, on my pinch pot that I want my bird probably if there's a thicker spot um, on your pinch pot you're probably gonna want to put on the thicker part just so that it has more strength which for me is on this side so I make some scratch marks did my finger in with water water on this side and I'm gonna place my bird like it's facing inside the bowl because maybe it's thirsty Maybe there's water in there. Like, uh, what are those? What do people have outside? Like, bird baths. Kind of like that. And now I'll go around and really smooth down the bottom just like that. But this is just another idea of something you can do for your pinch pot. Is make a little tiny animal to put on top of it. A little friend. Um, so, the next, uh, we'll go on to our next thing. So I'm gonna show you one more thing you can do with your pinch pot, which I'm gonna make a shark out of my pinch pot. You can really make any type of animal out of your pinch pot, but I'm just gonna show you how to make a shark today, because I wanna make a shark. Um, I'm gonna take off these little balls. Mine out a little bit. So to make our shark, you are gonna need probably a fork will do and you are gonna cut into our bowl because we're I'm gonna end up making this the mouth with some teeth in there so I'm gonna go in and kind of make like maybe a u-shape cut into the wall taking my time and I'm not rushing kind of like that just Tap it out and smooth it. And you're gonna tap it out and smooth it. And we're gonna do that same thing to the other side. You wanna make sure that both sides are as even as you can make them. extra clay we took off and any other extra clay you have sitting around make sure it's under a paper towel because you don't want it drying out but I'm going to take some of the extra clay I took from scooping out and I'm going to try and make a 
build up these walls a tiny bit more. So I'm just kind of making like a half circle shape um, and you want to keep it thick, uh, the same thickness as about um, the walls of your pinch pot. I think that looks about good. So I'm gonna make some scratch marks on the top of my rim and on the bottom of the circle. A little bit of water. And I'm gonna place it down. And I'm making mine, I'm thinning mine out a little bit just because mine wasn't long enough. It should be the same length as the side of that. So now I'm gonna place it down. Really try, you see my hands are a little bit too slick, I can't do it, there's too much water. I'm gonna try and combine these walls. sure everything is smooth so I'm gonna do that to the same side but I'm not gonna make this side as tall as that so I'm gonna make it a little bit short because this is gonna be the top part of his mouth I think so I'm gonna take a little bit more clay circle shape and we are going to make some scratch marks on the bottoms, a little water, place it down. So we're just going to keep smoothing the mouth of our shark, combining our clay pieces, making sure it's really smooth, no lumps and bumps. So we're just going to keep smoothing out until everything is combined and there's no lumps and bumps. So. Right now you have like uh, two of these little things. One side should be a little bit taller than the other one. And now we are going to make our little teeth. So to do this, you're gonna take a little bit of clay. You want it uh, somewhat thick, maybe about that thickness. And now we're gonna make them into little triangles. So I'm gonna use both my fingers and try and get into a triangle shape. I'm gonna flatten it. And you're just gonna keep doing this until you get your desired shark teeth. And then if it's too long, like mine might be a little bit too long, it kinda looks like a candy corn. Uh, I'm gonna cut the bottom off of it with a fork. So it's not as big. I'm gonna do the same thing again. Make it a little bit pointier. Just like that. And you're probably gonna make maybe like 10 of these or as many as that you could fit in your mouth. 
I'm probably gonna do five on each side, so a row of five here and a row of five here. Um, so for this, if you guys can see, we're just gonna take our little pieces and starting at the bottom, you'll just smooth it into place. One tooth, so we're gonna do the circles around the whole thing, all right? And once you're done doing the teeth, it should look something like this. Kind of scary. Um, at that point, you're gonna take uh, some more clay and start off about this much. And we are going to make our shark fin probably one of the most important things about a shark, or to define that it's a shark. So. I'm just rounding it off, doing the same thing that I did with the teeth, just trying to use my fingers to mold a triangle shape, trying to keep a good width with how thick it is. So you don't want it too thin, but I also don't want it too thick. Maybe you want to do the pinky check again, see if it's the width of your pinky, that's a good width. Um, really just trying to tap it into shape best that I can. I think that looks pretty good. So, this is going to go somewhere like, like here. So we're going to score and make little scratch marks on both of the parts that we are attaching. So a little bit right there, a little bit of water, a little bit of water. So when I'm attaching, I'm also gonna gently put my fingers inside so I have pressure on the other side while I'm attaching as well. And the same thing uh, you did before with everything else. We're gonna smooth um, our little sides down to meet and combine nicely and we'll stick the remain together. So now I'm gonna take my finger with a little water and smooth out any bumps. And this is kind of it for the shark, um, but it's nowhere near done um, because a lot of there's a lot of bumps, lots of little cracks, lots of little imperfections everywhere. So um, it's not going to be done until it's completely smooth. So this process of um, smoothing out your clay pinch pot, whether it's the shark, whether you made a dog, whether you made whatever you made the little uh, balls in the bottom of it, the little bird, uh, if you just did designs, you wanna make sure that it is completely smooth um, and there's no bumps, no lumps, no cracks. Um, and that you get the best that you can get it looking before it dries. And let's say, um, you know, you're not finished with it, but you wanna work on it tomorrow maybe, you can uh, take a few damp paper towels. Bring it out. You can gently wrap your piece in a paper towel and then gently put that into another Ziploc bag and seal it really tight and you can continue working on it tomorrow or smoothing out. Um, fixing any imperfections, but um, I hope you guys had a fun time today. I know I did. I had a really good time. Um, so when you're done with all these, like really, really done, and you're ready for them to dry completely, you're going to put them in a nice, dry, uh, could be sunny area. Um, not too sunny. You don't want it to be in direct sunlight because too much heat might force it to crack easily so probably just a nice warm area with not too too much sunlight 
um, leave it, check on it every couple of days, see how it's doing, and when it's completely light gray and there's no dark little spots on it, then you know it's ready to paint. Um, hope everyone had a good time. I know I did, and I can't wait to see you guys till next time. Bye!